welcome to today's National Safety Month webinar, Why Preventable Deaths Are on the Rise, brought to you by the National Safety Council. Allow me to introduce today's speaker. Ken Kolesh directs Statistical Reporting and Estimating Systems at the National Safety Council. Mr. Kolesh also leads the development of Injury Facts, the Council's online statistical resource on preventable injuries, their characteristics and costs, which is updated annually. Prior to joining NSC, Mr. Kolosh worked in the corporate e-learning industry. He served as Advanced Strategy and Systems Consultant with Element K and Managing Consultant with NET's G's Strategic Services Team. Mr. Kolosh was also Senior Researcher for NetG's Research and Development Group. Mr. Kolesh holds a Bachelor of Arts degree from DePaul University and a Master of Arts from Western Kentucky University. Now I'll turn it over to our speaker to tell you more about the reasons why preventable deaths are rising. Thank you, and thank you for attending the uh, annual National Safety Month uh, Injury Facts webinar. We have some really important uh, trends to talk about today and some really exciting news on how you will be able to access this data today and going forward. So our focus again will be uh, answering the question of how we got here. How did preventable causes of death or, or accidents become the third leading cause of death in the United States? And as we uh, go to answer that uh, question, we're going to be using a uh, a brand new resource, a uh, injuryfacts.nsc.org is a brand new website that National Safety Council is in the midst of developing. We're taking the Injury Facts book that we have published since 1921 and we're converting that to this online resource that you have access to uh, today. And we'll be going through as we talk about the, the trends, the overall trends, the home and community trends, the motor vehicle trends, and the, uh, the work injury trends, all of which are contributing to the overall, um, overall trend of the now the third leading cause of death, we'll be using the opportunity to introduce you to this new website. So at the end of this webinar, you're not only going to have a much better understanding of the preventable injury trends in the United States, but you also have a much better understanding of a really exciting, valuable resource. So let's get started. Uh, when you log on to or, or type in injuryfacts.nc.org, you will come to our home page or, or a landing page. And like any other website, you can navigate uh, using the uh, top navigation. But you also have the uh, option to uh, scroll down, and by scrolling over e each of these boxes, you can get an overview of what that topic has to cover. Just for, um, to get started, we're going to click on the All Injury section. And I do want to apologize at, at this point. We were originally planning on doing a live demo of this, but just for technical reasons, it really wasn't uh, foolproof and we really wanted to make sure you had the best um, experience possible. So we are doing screen grabs instead of a live demo today, but I assure you um, when you go to the website, it will ju look just like the uh, screen grabs we are displaying here for this webinar. So let's uh, pretend we are clicking on the All Injury section, and that will bring you, us to the All Injury Overview. Uh, and if you look on the uh, left, you'll see the left um, bar navigation. And we are going to uh, expand the preventable death section of that um, menu. And now we're going to pick deaths by month. And this is how all of our content is organized on the website. Before I start talking about the actual content, the reason why you're, you're all here today, uh, I want to just uh, give you a brief overview of the website. In the upper right corner of the website, you have the option. You, you are automatically brought to the Brief tab, and that will provide you a good overview of each of the safety topics 
but you also have the option of selecting the Data Details tab. And that's where you can really dive into the data. That's where we have a lot of interactive charts that you can use to better understand the trends. Um, so whatever you need, if you need a, a quick overview, then uh, the brief is where you want to go, or data details. And we'll be looking at both of those um, throughout the day today. So this is an infographic, pretty um, common what you will see in many of the brief pages. And remember this is looking at depth by month. So just a quick glance, we can see we're entering in a dangerous period for natural heat death. But um, we're re um, also approaching a period of time where fire deaths are at their lowest throughout the year. And not surprisingly also drowning deaths are starting to go up at this time of year. And, and this is really common again of what you will be able to uh, find in the brief pages. But if you want more detail, again, you scroll up and then you select this Data Details tab. And when you do so, you will come across interactive charts something like this. And this you are able to use, your, use the filters and, and scroll through multiple years of data. Also we can use a filter and select a specific cause of death to, to focus on. And that's what we're going to do here we are going to uh, look at motor vehicle, motor vehicle deaths by month. And by hovering over uh, a particular month, we get a, a pop-up showing that in October there were 3,834 deaths, while we have a total monthly motor vehicle death of 3,361. So I hope that gives you a quick overview of how the uh, new website um, functions. And now let's get really far deeper into the data. So to talk about how we got here, how preventable causes of death or, or what many people call accidents became the third leading cause, we're going to uh, start talking at a big picture and then we're going to drill down. We're going to drill down into home and community trends, um, uh, workplace trends, as well as motor vehicle. And where I like to start, oh, one more tutorial on the website. Then I promise we're going to get really into the data. Um, many of the charts I'm going to use today are directly from the website. And I want to make sure you know how to get to them when the webinar is over. So in the uh, title section, when a, uh, when a graphic is directly from the website, you will see this breadcrumb here. And this breadcrumb will direct you to where you can find this particular chart on the website. So it's in the All Injury section under Intentional Deaths, and the page uh, title is Compared to Preventable. All right, enough with the tutorial. Let's get to the data. And this chart is where I like to start many of my presentations because I think it really provides an incredible level of context of why we like why the National Safety Council is focused on preventable or accidental uh, death. In the U.S. in 2016, 231,991 people died from injuries. Seventy percent of those are preventable, 161,374. The, uh, the remaining about 28% are cut, uh, split between suicide, assault, legal um, intervention, and operations of war. Assault deaths, which is what I think most of us when we watch the news hear about the most and are, are perhaps most concerned with, that represent 8% of the overall injury death in the U.S. in 2016 totaling 19,362. I, I don't believe most Americans uh, are aware that there's far more suicide death each year in 2016, 44,965, than there are assault or homicide deaths. And that's why I, I think this webinar and injury facts is so important. It, it is a source of uh, accurate information, hopefully uh, delivered in a uh, visually appealing, understandable way to help people better understand and, um, the, the trends, how, um, what are the risks that face them, and, and what is more or less likely to harm them as they live their daily lives. And 
And with that, let's really focus now on that 70% of the pie, the 70% the, the of deaths which are either are preventable or accidental. And again, that is for the first time in U.S. history, the third leading cause of death. And it's actually the leading cause of death for individuals from 1 to, uh, to age 45. To pro provide a little more context, um, over a span of one hour, the, the time it takes to do this webinar, on average 18 people die in the United States. And um, as we, I keep saying, preventable causes of death are now the third leading cause of death. As uh, early as 2011, it was the, the fifth leading cause of death and has since started to, to rise. Um, it is, um, how, although this is not a new occurrence um, it, with, uh, for males, uh, preventable causes of death have been the third, uh, third, third leading cause of death be behind heart disease and cancer since uh, 2001. However, among women, it's still not the uh, third leading cause of death. They're actually the sixth leading cause of death, death behind uh, heart disease, cancer, chronic lower respiratory disease, stroke, and Alzheimer's disease. So at thir as the third leading cause of death, 161,374, it still falls far below the number of deaths for either heart disease or cancer. So it's likely to stay the third leading cause of death for the foreseeable future. But, but unfortunately, we're really in almost emergency situations right now when we look at the trends. Uh, Preventable causes of death increased 10% in just one year from 2015 to 2016, far faster than any other of the uh, leading causes uh, of death. When we look at where these deaths are occurring and injuries are occurring, over half of them, 53%, are occurring in our homes where many of us feel by far the safest when we uh, look at um, where people where other, uh, where other places people are dying, a quarter, around 24%, are, uh, are motor vehicle crashes, then 21% uh, uh, deaths in public places. When we look at non-fatal, a slightly different profile, oh, just over a quarter, 26% deaths in public places, and then the remaining split evenly between 10% motor vehicle non-fatal injuries and 10% um, work non-motor vehicle. Uh, non-fatal injuries. And again, the trend lines are going in the wrong direction right now. Although historically, we have made incredible progress. The United States is a far safer place than it was at the turn of the century. This chart is looking at age-adjusted death rates, which is just a, a technical way to, to have the most comparable death rate per 100,000 po population as possible. Um, the, the reason uh, you use age-adjusted is because the uh, proportion of the population of, uh, of a certain age varies over time, and this controls for that. But, but simply put, we are far safer than we were. Uh, in 1910, our death rate was 103 per 100,000 population. Today, it's 47.2, so we're vastly better off. But unfortunately, right now we're going in the wrong direction. In 1992, we had a death rate of 34.0. Now again, we're at a death rate of 47.2. That is an increase of 39% since 1992. That is why we are now at the uh, preventable causes of death are now at the third leading cause of death, um, and it's pretty clear of what is causing this increase. We're going to go to another chart in injury facts. It's a little busy, but we're going to use filters to uh, zoom in on what we care about right here. But what this is looking at is the number of deaths by single year for various leading causes of death. We can adjust this using filters to rate, but right now what we're going to do is we're going to use this filter up here, and we're going to zoom into uh, the time period of 1992 to 2016. And that really helps sort of clarify the picture. We see here in purple, these are poisoning deaths. 
the red are fall deaths, this yellow is motor vehicle deaths. And, and we see I superimposed some percentages up there for you. Poisoning deaths have increased 724% since 1992. This is largely due to the drug overdose epidemic, uh, largely uh, opioids, and I'll be talking about that trend uh, uh, extensively throughout today. And also we have the increase in fall-related deaths. And this is largely associated with the increase in older adult falls. We'll be talking about that trend as well as we go through. We actually have seen increases in motor vehicle deaths over the last few years, but if you compare it longer term, uh, particularly against 1992, we are actually uh, still um, doing pretty well regarding motor vehicle deaths uh, long term wise, and we'll go through the motor vehicle trends uh, uh, in, in just a little bit in great detail. Another way to uh, look at the data is looking at the uh, number of deaths by single year of age. And I'm going back in time here. I'm going back to 1999. And then we're going to skip ahead to 2016. And what we see in 1999 is a fairly, fairly simple picture. We see a large increase in deaths among uh, older teens and young adults with motor, ve uh, motor vehicle deaths. So it was clear in 1999 if we wanted to dr um, drive down preventable deaths, we needed to focus on young, uh, young driver safety. We also see the beginning of a few other trends. We see a, a, a spike here regarding mechanical suffocations for uh, children younger than one year of age. We see the start of the increase in poisoning deaths and we see the uh, start of the increase in older adult deaths. So this is 1999. Again, let's skip ahead to uh, most current data available, 2016, and we see a, a much different picture. We first see a, a strong de decrease or an improvement in young driver deaths. So this is great news. Let's not um, overlook the progress we have made. We still have a lot more progress to, uh, to accomplish, but we have improved safety on our roads, particularly among young drivers, since um, 1999. But unfortunately, all the other trends are in the wrong direction. We have now about 1,000 children under the age of one dying of mechanical suffocation. We have a huge increase in poisoning deaths. Again, this is being driven by opioids and um, other drug overdoses. And now we also see a, a very large increase in older adult fall deaths. Another way to look at the data is by race and eth ethnicity groups. And the reason this is important is, in general, many of the trends we talk about today and, and in general are sometimes overwhelmed by the non-Hispanic white population. Uh, non-Hispanic whites uh, account for many of the deaths, uh, 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 um, over half of the uh, preventable uh, deaths in the U.S. And because of that, the, the trends to non-Hispanic whites can overwhelm or hide the trends to other um, ethnic groups. So this is our opportunity to look at the various um, preventable uh, death trends in the U.S. by race and ethnicity. And we're only going to look at this for a few minutes, but I, 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 I urge you to take the time because this is an incredibly powerful tool here. We see here, and this is looking at death rates per 100,000 population, that American Indians and Alaskan uh, Americans have the highest death rate followed by non-Hispanic whites then non-Hispanic African Americans, and then Hispanic or Latino uh, whites, white population. Again, you can use these filters to select what other, whatever ethnic group you would like. You can look at number of deaths or rates. And right now, we're going to drill down by cause of death, and we're going to select poisonings. And what we see with poisonings is, is again, um, all the uh, uh, subgroups, or nearly all the subgroups, are really showing strong increases in the uh, rate of poisoning deaths. Once again, um, American, 
American Indian or Alaskans have the highest death rate, followed by non-Hispanic whites. But look at the increase of uh, non-Hispanic African Americans. That is a, a huge increase, and this is being driven by drug overdose trends, followed by Hispanic or Latino white population. And before, I, I am also going to talk about the economic impact of how these deaths and injuries are impacting the United States. Before I go there, I want to talk about one other way to look at the data and get a better sense of your relative risk from various causes of death. We see here that you have one chance in 109 of dying in your lifetime from an opioid drug overdose. Uh, one chance in 109. That's nearly as likely as you have in your lifetime of dying in a, uh, uh, in a car crash, a motor vehicle crash. One chance in 102. Uh, th th these odds um, are actually really uh, quite startling when you compare it to some other activities. Many of us are a little bit anxious when we gotta get in an airplane, but if we are, we're not aware that there's one chance in 205,552 um, of you dying in a, as a passenger in an airplane in your lifetime. Uh, you are far more likely to, um, to have problems on your way to the airport in your car than you are flying on a, on a commercial airline. So again, you can uh, um, pick and choose the uh, causes, uh, uh, causes of death you would like to uh, look at in this chart. And really, hopefully, it helps provide some context of what are the uh, um, more likely um, events that can negatively impact as you live your lives versus more rare but dramatic events like a plane crash. And again, we like to focus at the National Safety Council and certainly being reflected uh, in injury facts about the uh, cost, the human suffering, and the loss of life. But there are also real economic costs associated with these deaths and injuries. The National Safety Council estimates that in 2016, preventable causes of death and injury cost our nation $967.9 billion. That's equivalent to 7,700 per household or 3,000 per person. And these are societal costs that we all pay uh, directly. It's baked into the price of uh, goods and services. It, it, it drives higher insurance premiums and results in higher taxes. Most of the, uh, not most, but the largest proportion of these costs are associated with motor vehicle crashes followed by uh, injuries uh, and um, um, deaths that occur in our homes. So, so again, although um, home injuries are the uh, home and community injuries are by far more frequent because of the costs associated with motor vehicle crashes, motor vehicle crashes um, result in the most economic uh, burden to our society. And now let's move on to home and community section. And, but before I start talking about the trends, I want to make sure we, we define what we're talking about a little bit. When we talk about home and community, it's injuries or fatalities that occur in and around our homes occur in, or occur in public places. But for now, we are excluding work-related injuries and motor vehicle-related injuries and death. And the reason for that is we are going to focus on those two important topics later in on this presentation. And we just want to uh, focus on injuries at home and in public places at this point. And the reason we want to do it is of the uh, 161,374 deaths in 2016, 70 percent or 118,700 of these deaths occurred in our homes and communities, and an increase of 11 percent in just one year. Uh, also, if you uh, add in the 35.6 million medically consulted injuries, one person out of every nine is being directly impacted by an injury occurring in our homes and communities. And the trends, again, are going in the wrong direction. The blue line are, are the number of deaths 
occurring in our homes. And the green line is the number of deaths that are occurring in public places in the United States, both going up dramatically and both really being driven by two causes, poisonings in blue and falls uh, in red. And we'll be uh, drilling down to both of these trends in just a moment. And when we talk about um, poisoning deaths in our homes and communities, disproportionately poisonings are impacting the 15 to 64 year age group, while falls are impacting individuals 65 and older. So now let's focus a little bit more on the uh, preventable poisoning death trends. When we talk about serious injury and death, we're primarily discussing an adult safety issue. 98% of all poisoning um, deaths are occurring to individuals 19 years of age or older, and 91% of the uh, um, poisoning serious enough re to result in an emergency department visit are occurring to individuals 19 years of age or older. However, when we talk about poisoning exposure, and we're measuring poisoning exposure here by cause to the poison control hotline, all, all age groups are impacted. 47% of cause to the poison control hotline are for children 0 to 5, 14% are for children 6 to 19, and the remaining 39% are for uh, young adults and adults greater than 19 years of age. And again, these poisoning trends and death rates are skyrocketing. Um, no, no other cause of death is increasing as quickly and as for as long of a period as poisonings are right now. And the reason what's driving this is drug overdoses. And we have a, a really powerful drug overdose um, tool on our website. And using that, you can look at different uh, uh, drugs and the, the prevalence of death and death rates. Um, looking at um, this chart, I've picked a, a few drugs. I've picked opioids, and this includes all opioids, cocaine, and cannabis. You see in 2016, there was 37,814 uh, opioid overdoses. Um, 9,899 cocaine overdoses, and there were even about 502 uh, cannabis overdoses. I do want to caution that these um, deaths are not mutually exclusive. If a, uh, more than one drug was involved in or contributed to the death, more than one drug is included in the death certificate and thus reflected in these numbers. So it is very possible that some of these cocaine deaths are also opioid deaths and vice versa. So, uh, so please don't add these numbers uh, to, uh, together um, like that. But you see the increases in opioid deaths, and also we're seeing increases in cocaine deaths as well. And the, the next slide is drilling down just to the uh, opioid-related deaths. Um, we see here in gray and in this gray line here, these are the synthetic opioids uh, that include fentanyl. They have, the fentanyl-related deaths have skyrocketed in just a, a few years, now being the uh, leading opioid substance involved in deaths. Uh, that is followed by uh, heroin, which is also increasing rapidly. It followed by the uh, natural and semi-synthetic opioids, which include oxycodone, hydrocodone, et cetera, which used to be the leading uh, substance involved in opioid-related deaths just a few years ago. So really, uh, the, uh, the drug overdose epidemic continues to evolve and change rapidly, and we will be maintaining this chart in the years, uh, years to come, so you always have the most up-to-date drug overdose data available. And now let's shift uh, gears for a few slides to the older adult fall issue. Again, this is death and death rates, and, and you see how, how, how rapidly the number of deaths and, death, and the death rate per 100,000 population is increasing. There, there's a couple factors contributing to this trend. 
Uh, the first is the growing demographic of the older population. There's simply more older adults at risk for fall today than there were in the 90s. So, so we have a larger population at risk. But we also, at the very same time, have improved our uh, data recording procedures, and, and we have a much more accurate number today or estimate of the number of older adults succumbing to uh, um, dying because of falls than we did again in the, in the 90s. So at the same time, we have an increasing population as well as uh, improved uh, uh, counting of those deaths. So th there is a real increase, but some of this increase is an improvement in uh, um, death certificate um, um, estimation. And if we look at risk by age group, this is again death rate by um, age group. Although the uh, risk for fatal falls starts to increase at age 65 to 74, the increase doesn't really uh, skyrocket until 75 and older. All right, with that, let's move on to the motor vehicle section. The motor ve uh, vehicle section and motor vehicle fatality trends are actually fairly complex um, and are really important to understand. Uh, we are increasing. The number of motor vehicle deaths in 2016 increased 7% in one year. Overall, preventable deaths increased 10%. Motor vehicle contributed a 7% increase. Now, 40,327 people died in motor vehicles in 2016. Um, Largely associated with that is an increase in miles traveled. Uh, the economy is, was very strong in 2016. Uh, and let's look at a, a, a trend. that This will help show it. During times of poor economy, fewer people drive, and the number of deaths on our roads decrease. That is what we saw during the last recession. Since that uh, recession, we had multiple years of sort of a post-recession plateau, but now for 15 and 16, we saw very large increases in the number of motor vehicle deaths. However, we have not re, uh, rejoined the pre-recession high, which is very good news. And the National Safety Council also does ongoing preliminary estimates of the number of motor vehicle deaths, and our preliminary estimates for 2017 show a plateauing at around the 2016 level, just dipping down perhaps to 40,100 deaths. We're also seeing a uh, decrease or a plateauing in the number of deaths per 100 million vehicle miles traveled. So we may be reaching a plateau. This post-recession increase may be at the end, hopefully, and we really have to uh, wait and see and see um, when we get more preliminary data available for 2018. Let's look at some of the, the safety issues that are impacting these trends. The, the first of those issues I want to talk about is young driver safety. Uh, in 2016, 4,853 individuals lost their lives in a, in a crash involving at least one young driver from age 15 to 20. These are not deaths of 15 and 20 year olds. Uh, these are deaths of any, uh, of any age that are involved in a crash with at least one teen driver. In, in fact, less than half of these deaths are, are the teen drivers themselves. 21% uh, are th their occupants, 28% are occupants of other vehicles sharing the road with teen drivers, and 12% are, are non-occupants, uh, pedestrians and bicyclists. And one of the uh, really uh, programs that have been proven to help save young drivers' lives is state graduated driver's licensing programs. And one of the, um, the hallmarks of those types of programs is the um, control or the uh, decrease in access to nighttime driving. Research has shown consistently that nighttime driving is particularly dangerous for young drivers. And I think this chart really does a great uh, example of demonstrating that. 
On the left, this is the proportion of trips taken by time of day for young drivers. On the right is the proportion of fatal crashes involving young drivers. So we see here, I'm not sure if you can read it, 0.7% of young driver trips occur between midnight and 6 a.m. But those 0.7% of trips result in 13.3% of the fatal crashes. 9.7% of the trips occur from 9 p.m. to midnight, yet um, result in 17.3% of the fatal crashes. That is why state um, graduate driving licensing programs are so important. And it's also, if you are a parent with a young driver in your household, why it's so important for you to monitor and limit the, the amount of driving your, your young teen is doing uh, on, his, on his or her own. And whenever possible, encourage the uh, teen to drive with you at night. Another safety issue that we have um, actually some good news about, um, some mixed and some good news is distracted driving. The bad news is we still have 3,450 people at minimum uh, dying in, a, in crashes that involve distraction. And the reason I say minimum is that there's many obstacles in, in to getting a, a truly accurate count is very difficult during post-crash investigations to ascertain if distraction was a factor or not. We also know that 6% of drivers at any given mo moment are still using their cell phones in 16. But we, still, we do have some encouraging trends. The, the first encouraging trend is we really don't see, this is number of uh, fatal crashes involving distraction. The orange area is uh, any type of distraction other than cell phone. The red is cell phone related distract, uh, distracted driving fatal crashes. And what we see here is no particular trend one way or the other. It seems relatively stable from one year to the next. But what we do see uh, of great promise is a continued decrease observation of drivers using cell phones either handheld or hands-free. We, we're now at um, multiple years of seeing this downward trend. So that is absolutely wonderful news. Um, promising is we're seeing a plateau or perhaps even a slight decrease in the percent of drivers visibly manipulating handheld devices. And this could be texting. This could be surfing the internet. This could be interacting with apps. Um, related to that, we, also, we even see a decrease or a plateau of our youngest drivers visibly manipulating handheld devices. And we were seeing incredible increases in the percentage of use prior. Um, so we have now had two years of either decrease or plateaued levels. So that is also very good news. Now let's move to um, alcohol impairment. We aren't seeing much improvement regarding alcohol, perhaps some. We're still at 28% of all deaths uh, on our roadways um, in, involving at least one um, alcohol impaired driver. And that's at the 0 .08 legal uh, threshold. We know impairment actually starts well before then. So again, that this 10,497 deaths is still a, uh, a minimum number of deaths. And now let's look at occupant protection, because we actually have some promising news to talk about regarding occupant protection. We are at 90% belt use for front seat passengers. That is two years in a row that the nation as a whole has reached that 90% threshold but we still have much more work to do. We know that states with primary enforcement, states that allow law enforcement to pull over a car because they observe a driver not wearing a seatbelt, we know those states have even higher seatbelt usage of 92% versus secondary states that have 83% belt usage. What we also know, although with less um, definitive statistics is that people are far less likely to belt up in the back seat. 
you, uh, many people are, uh, forget about um, belt up when they jump into an Uber or a taxi. And we see much lower seat belt usage in back seats. We now need to shift our focus a little bit and start trying to um, get all uh, occupants to wear seat belts in a po proper restraint, regardless of where they're sitting. As a part of that, we really need to focus on child restraint use and the benefits it poses. When we look at observation data for ages uh, for children under one, we see that only 3% are unrestrained, yet those 3% represent 16% of the deaths. Similarly, when we observe one to three-year-olds, 6% are unrestrained, yet represent 22% of the deaths. Among four to seven-year-olds, 12% are unrestrained. That is a lower um, usage than overall adults in front seats, 12%. Only 10% non-usage among adults in front seats right now. And they represent 31% of deaths. And among 8 to 12-year-olds, 16% are observed unrestrained and represent 44% of the deaths. Obviously, a lot more work, a lot more improvement needs to be done uh, regarding this safety issue. Another really important injury facts page I want to highlight is the uh, child heat stroke deaths um, page we have. The reason this page is so important um, is it's maintained on an ongoing basis. We're adding data and updating the charts throughout the year as new data um, is reported. We uh, in fact, this chart is a few um, days old now, and unfortunately, we have uh, hit 16 uh, heat stroke deaths, child and hot car deaths, this year uh, alone. And unfortunately, are working towards the average number of 37 deaths per year. Speeding also con continues to be a concern. Uh, it went up 4% in 2015 and still accounts for more than 10,000 uh, deaths a year. Um, and it was a fact, uh, factor in 27% 27 27 of all fatal crashes. Motorcycles. Motorcycles um, are always a safety concern. They, they are an increasingly popular form of transportation. Um, but but the, the safety concerns continue. Uh, overall, motorcycles represent 3% of the registered vehicles, less than 1% of the miles traveled, yet account for 14% of the fatalities. Uh, and now pedestrians. Um, motorcyclists are at risk, are vulnerable road users. Obviously, pedestrians are a part of that vulnerable road user group. There were 7,400 pedestrian deaths and 164,000 medically consulted injuries in 2016. Uh, pedestrian fatalities have increased over a quarter, 27% in just the last 10 years. There's a lot we know about pedestrian fatality trends. We know most of these uh, d uh, pedestrian deaths are occurring in urban uh, uh, areas. We also know that most of them are not occurring at intersections, but are occurring in uh, non-intersection road or road sections. We also know, although not put on, on the slide, that many of these deaths are occurring at night. And with that, that is the last of the road, uh, road safety issues we're going to be covering today. There is more data out there. I encourage you to go to injuryfacts.nsc.org. But for now, we need to move on to workplace trends. Um, in the workplace, uh, much like motor vehicle trends uh, went up 7% in 2016, and is really highly related to the economic trends. We saw decreases during the recession. Now, unfortunately, we're seeing post-recession increases. Most of these deaths are accidental or preventable, 4,398. We see the uh, industries with the most uh, fatalities are construction, transportation, warehousing, and agriculture. 
And when we take into account the size of an industry and the number of employee hours worked, the uh, riskiest industries are agriculture, transportation and warehousing, and then construction. 35% of these fatalities are roadway related, followed by falls to a lower level, struck by, and homicide deaths. When we look at non-fatal, we see continued improvement in the uh, overall OSHA non-fatal uh, um, uh, recordable case rate, and we see a plateauing in the more serious days away from work case rate. When we look at the industries where the most non-fatal injuries occur, it's state and local government, followed by educational health services and manufacturing. When we look at their rates, we see uh, agriculture, state and local government, transportation, warehousing leading the most risky industries. When we look at how these non-fatal injuries are occurring, over half are either overexertion, falls to the same level, or struck by uh, injuries. And that's the, just a quick overview of the motor uh, workplace Trends. And there's again uh, the workplace trend uh, section of injury facts has not been built out yet, but we will have a, uh, a major release of all workplace injury data be, um, by October to uh, coincide with our National Safety Council. And just to wrap up, looking at the trend since '92, again 1992 marked the. Uh, the point in where the trend started moving um, up instead of down and has resulted in us uh, unfortunately achieving preventable causes of death being the third leading cause of death. But when we look at workplace trends, workplace fatalities are really not contributing to this trend. In fact, workplace death rates have gone down 38% since 92. When we look at um, highway death rates, um, motor vehicle death rates have gone down 31% since 1992. Really all of the increase we've been seeing since 1992 are deaths that are occurring in our homes and communities with uh, death rates increasing 117%. And with averaging these three trends together, we see an overall um, a death rate increase of 47 percent in just since 1992. And with that, I would like to wrap up and open up the uh, um, chat for um, Q&A if anyone would be interested in uh, typing in a question. Thank you, Ken. If you would like to ask a question via the web presentation, just select the chat pod located in the lower left hand corner of your screen and then type and send your question that way. Um, we have some questions waiting. At the very beginning of the call, Ken, um, this came in in the first couple of slides. They were wondering if you could repeat the website address. I can. It is actually fortunately on our screen right now. It's injury facts. .nsc.org. Perfect. And just have a mm -hmm. comment here. I'm not sure. It says 3,361 is average, not total. Uh, not exactly sure. Oh yes, uh, I, I see. Just just to clarify, the the commenter is absolutely correct. Let me, if I could find this, may I, I'm sure I misspoke. When we look, this is the motor vehicle deaths by, by month, and the average monthly uh, number of deaths is 3,361 deaths per month on average. Okay. Now, why are white deaths from drug overdoses described as an opioid problem, but when described for blacks, it's called drug overdoses? Is your data, data pulled differently for the two different groups? Well, if that's how, what I, I, I it, I'm not sure how I said it, um, but really there is a drug overdose trend and an opioid uh, issue for all race and ethnic groups. Right now, where this slide right now is 
focused on um, overall poisoning, which um, would include all forms of poisoning, including all forms of drugs, including opioids as well as other drugs. If I inferred otherwise, uh, I apologize. Where on the NSC website do I find the tool that allows you to filter to see the statistics by race? The one more time, the specifics by race? Yes. You see, um, right now this is the, uh, the page you would go to. You would go to uh, the all injury section, death by demographics, then race and ethnicity. And although I'm just um, focusing right now on the poisoning cause of death, you can filter by all the leading causes of preventable death. And you can look at, uh, uh, focus on age groups, you can look at deaths or death rates, uh, and you can filter by the uh, dif different uh, ethnicities and race groups. Okay. And also you can look at, uh, uh, you can filter by year. Right. Um, not exactly sure what this means. I've got a comment here. Overexertion equals people not exercising. Uh, overexertion injuries are, are very com uh, they're not uh, non-fatal overexertion injuries are very common in the workplace. Overexertion injuries uh, in general. Um, let me get to that slide. Yep, overexertion injuries right here. It's a leading cause of non-fatal injuries. These are generally uh, uh, lifting or carrying injuries, per, uh, particularly when it comes to lifting and uh, and uh, um, rotating. So you're lifting and you're bending. Uh, those are the types of injuries that overexertion is really talking about. Uh, it may or may not be related to overall physical fitness. What are medically consulted deaths? Sure. Uh, it is a uh, medically consulted injuries are in any injury that are serious enough that a medical uh, prof professional is consulted. This could mean a doctor's visit, but it also could mean a phone call to a physician. It was, uh, this data is primarily collected through the National um, Health Interview Survey conducted by the CDC. Okay. Um, there is any data about wind energy falls? Wind energy, uh, um, well, right now that would be a primarily a workplace issue, and we are building out the work, workplace section right now. And we will have a very in-depth um, search capability looking at specific industries. So if wind energy is, um, if there's data specific to wind, uh, wind ener energy in, in, uh, injuries, sorry, uh, made available through the Bureau of Labor Statistics, it will be available on injury facts uh, before October. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head if wind energy is a industry that is pulled out or not. Regarding motorcycles, uh, slide 61, can death rate drops be attributed to helmet laws or speed limits? Uh, I wish it was. Um, uh, just, I, actually, I'm just going to go back to it. Motorcycles. Um, the uh, the uh, actually the helmet use. I don't have the stats in front of me, but in general, helmet use has uh, gone down in, in uh, re recent history. Many of the uh, states have uh, repealed helmet laws, and when uh, helmet laws are not in place, uh, many operators choose not to wear their hel wear helmets. Uh, helmets have been proven to help prevent serious injury and death. So, so that's a very unfortunate trend line. 
the the rate of uh, the death rate per 100 million miles traveled went down primarily because so many more people are uh, riding motorcycles recently. That that trend sort of started during the recession when people started riding their motorcycles to save money on gas. Um, but the uh, the the prevalence and the popularity of motorcycles continues. So we actually have seen a, a strong increase in the miles traveled in motorcycles, and that the miles traveled has been increasing faster than the number uh, of deaths on our road, which is a very uh, positive trend, obviously. But unfortunately, it's not because of improved use of a life-saving uh, activity like wearing your helmet. Are there statistic are these statistics similar to those given by the Bureau of Labor Statistics? Ye yes, we act, um, this is uh, I think this question is specific to the workplace section. Yes, the injury facts uses many many different sources of data uh, uh, to and then we work with the data to display it as thoughtfully as possible. And all of our workplace data comes from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Is there data on the number of deaths that occur in the workplace due to drug and alcohol? There are um, poison. Uh, I, I don't have it in front of me. Uh, we do have, there, if someone overdoses on drugs or alcohol, at work and, and, and perishes, that de uh, death will be recorded as, as a poisoning and, or, or an overdose death. But those deaths are, are very rare. Uh, uh, there, there certainly are overdose deaths in the workplace. Far more prevalent but much harder to quantify is the number of uh, injuries and uh, accidents that occur in the workplace because someone is intoxicated or, or impaired on drugs. We do, there are estimates out um, there, and uh, I believe you could go to nsc.org, and um, there might be some data out there, but it, it is much harder to quantify. All right. What does fall LL versus fall SL on the workplace non-fatal injuries involving days away from work by event chart? Sure, and I'm sorry, I must have gone over that too quickly. Uh, falls, SL is falls to the same level. Falls to the same level um, are far more likely to be non-fatal events, and they're far more frequent. They occur, falls to the same level, trips and falls, um, are very frequent events but tend to be less uh, severe and non-fatal. Falls, LL falls to a lower level, tend to be less frequent but more severe, more likely to result in fatalities. Okay. Is the drug problem related to the driving problem? Uh, almost certainly. Again, it uh, is hard to quantify. Uh, there are there's a lot of research going on right now regarding marijuana and driving, and, and the results are inconclusive at this point. Um, what's really diminishing our ability to know for certain is there are very inconsistent drug screening policies in various states and municipalities. So we don't have a great body of data to look at as re as researchers to really definitively answer that. But all, all, nearly all researchers are, are, are pretty convinced that drugs are um, decreasing our ability to drive safely. For occupational injury and fatality reduction, does the NSC have commentary and statistics um, on serious injuries and fatalities by industry? We are building the, uh, the workplace section right now, and we're going to have a, 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 a whole section devoted to uh, workplace statistics in the coming months. 
is there a web page that provides data specifically for the manufacturing division injury rates? Uh, again, uh, we will have uh, multiple pages and the ability to look up injury rates by specific uh, um, industry. So I, I think your needs will be met. And uh, we're working very hard right now on building that content. Okay. Also, is there further breakdown on non-fatal injuries in the workplace um, struck by, for example, falling objects, forklift, et cetera? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I know I sound like a broken record, but yes, we're going to have, uh, if you're familiar with the Injury Facts book, we were limited by the number of pages, around 200 pages. Um, and that's one of the wonderful things about having a website. And we are going to be able to provide so much more detail uh, on topics like that than ever before. So, so uh, please be patient, and we are going to have a, a great workplace section available as soon as we can. Okay. Why are workplace non-fatal injuries uh, falls on the same level not part of slip trip? It is a subcategory of uh, there's, uh, the way the Bureau of Labor Statistics categorizes. It's, it's uh, falls, slips, trips, with, and uh, trip, trip without falls is the sort of parent category. We broke it down a little bit um, and felt it was just more uh, meaningful to most people, but that data is available. Okay, comments on workplace violence beyond retail industry. What does the data show? Uh, we are going to have an, an assault, um, a topic page in Injury Facts. And we're analyzing that data right now. The majority, uh, I could tell you just from looking at the data yesterday um, while building the website, at least for uh, fatals, most of the fatal uh, uh, assault, workplace assaults are gun-related. Um, and uh, we will have more information uh, on that as soon as our workplace section is finished. Can the increase in home and community injury be attributed to the increase in terror ac terrorist activity in the states causing people to stay in their community? Um, I, I really don't know. There, there, I don't know if um, I think it's more driven by the uh, overall trends and causes of death namely uh, older adults tend to fall in their homes. So that's where the, uh, um, the ev uh, fall events resulting in death occur. Also with the overall drug overdose epidemic, particularly uh, opioids, um, people tend to overdose in their homes. Okay, we have a couple of people wondering if the presentation is available. Um, Either Ken or Debbie, if you could answer that. Uh, well, I know the uh, presentation is being uh, recorded. Debbie, do um, you know if it's going to be posted somewhere on nsc.org? Yes, it will be posted on nsc.org slash NSM, our National Safety Month page, but it will also be emailed to everyone who has registered for the event. Great. Perfect. So that does conclude our question and answer session today. Um, did you have any closing remarks you wanted to make, Ken? I just really want to thank everyone for uh, attending and asking some really great questions. I, I think your questions really helped to clarify um, my message, so I appreciate each and every question. Uh, and I, I, I hope there's not too much uh, frustration about the workplace section still being built out for injury facts. We actually didn't want it to be the first section we built because we are learning as we're going and we wanted to make sure we had some um, experience behind our belts before we started the workplace section. So uh, I, I assure you that the uh, wait will be worth it. Okay, well, we want to thank everyone for joining us today for this webinar. We appreciate your attention and participation in today's event. 
A recording of this webinar will be emailed to you in a few days. If you have not already done so, please visit the National Safety Month webpage at nsc.org forward slash NSM for free resources to ensure that no one gets hurt. Thank you again for attending the webinar, and everyone have a great day.